Our genome is huge and has many mysteries. The DC rich regions are one among those. Hello friends, I am Dr. Manishi Siddharth. Here, in the present video, I'll explain the importance of the GC bases in our genome as well as in PCR techniques. So let's begin with the basic structure of our DNA. As we know, our human genome comprises four types of nitrogenous bases, namely adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and they are categorized into purines and pyrimidines. One nucleotide structure includes a base, a phosphate, and a sugar. And our DNA is made up of long chain of these nucleotides, oftenly called a polynucleotide chain. Each base binds with another complementary base with hydrogen bonds, like the adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with the thymine and vice versa, and guanine forms three hydrogen bonds with cytosine and vice versa. So now come to the point that the importance of GC rich region in our genome. The genome can broadly be classified into genes and non-coding junk sequences, that is exons and introns. However, the GC content regions spam both coding and non-coding regions, henceforth are important for gene expression as well as protein formation. So there is a huge region in the human genome have GC rich domains, which took part in constructing some vital genes too often. These GC rich domains also known as isocodes. Cytologically, these regions consist of the GC base pair isocode stains darker than the AT rich regions. So what exactly are isocodes? The isocodes are the region larger than 300 kb in size, which has higher evenly distributed gene regions in the genome. It is believed that these isocore regions evolved late during the process of evolution and provided heterogeneity to the genome. Human have 39.7% of GC content. Importantly, it is present not only in heterochromatin but also in euchromatin and so is an important part of genes too. Another term is important when we talk about GC rich region that is CPG island. Broadly the higher GC rich repetitive areas are denoted as CPG island in a nucleotide sequences. So why we use two different terms for GC rich repetitives? There is a difference between two. When we used term CPG rich region, it will be present in nucleotide sequences. Isocore term will be used in genome sequences. So remember always, CPG rich regions in a nucleotide sequence or isocores in genome sequences. So structurally, the CPG islands are usually located in gene exons, introns, 5 prime and untranslated regions and 3 prime and untranslated regions and also in the non coding sequences cpg island have a definite role in the development of disease huntington disease is the classic example of a change in the number of cag repeats of the htt genes studies also showed the role of CPG islands involved more in DNA bendability than in thermostability. Higher GC content has higher thermal stability, while lower GC content has low thermostability. Coming to the importance of GC rich isocores, studies showed that GC isocores are significantly associated with genome size and holocentric chromosomal structure. GC content may also have deep ecological relevance because changes in GC content may have played a significant role in the evolution of Earth's biota, especially the rise of grass-dominated biomes during the mid-tertiary. So, the GC-rich regions have a definite role in gene regulation, gene expression, genome functionality, and disease development. Coming to the next, role of GC-rich regions in PCR. 
The GC-rich regions are thermostable and they need more energy to open the DNA frame. So, the GC-rich templates have a higher annealing and melting temperature. The reason behind that is the triple hydrogen bonds between G and C. More hydrogen bonds elevate the energy or temperature requirement for separating the double-stranded DNA. Besides that, elevated G and C nucleotides make it hard for a primer to amplify the target DNA. It is advisable to select GC-rich regions between 40 to 60 percent. If the GC exceeds 60 percent, the PCR experiment needs a higher annealing temperature. Ultimately, there is an increased chances of non-specific bindings of primer on the DNA template and consequently increases the chances of false positive results. So, different optimized PCR protocol is needed to amplify more GC-rich regions. So, it is advisable that care must be taken while selecting the PCR template DNA and designing primers. Coming to the next, calculating the GC-rich regions. In order to make a decision on how our primer or template sequence behaves during the PCR, depending on the GC nucleotide number, and therefore we need to calculate it. Here is the equation. If you wish to calculate the ratio of AT by GC, you can also use this equation. Some of the online tools also can help in doing this, which are easy to use. Use this link to calculate the GC content directly. Coming to the next, applications of GC rich regions. Our genome has wide varieties of information and sequences. Every different sequence provides different information and has varied utility. For example, the short tandem repeats are useful for DNA fingerprinting. The GC-rich sequences are a huge part of gene structure so useful in gene mapping. Analysis of CPG island-rich GC regions also benefits to study, identify, and characterize genetic disorders. In the cytogenetic study, GC and AT-rich regions stain differently and form different binding patterns and facilitate copy number variation studies. As we talked, the GC-rich sequences also have significant importance in designing PCR primers and PCR assays. So in conclusion, our genome is huge. Plenty of regions and sequences are still unknown to us. We even don't know their function. GC-rich sequences are such a type that are also less studied. Still, the functionality of GC-rich region is unclear. However, it has importance in amplification and primer designing. So these are the references. So thank you for listening. For upcoming videos, don't forget to subscribe and give thumbs up. If you like this video, stay tuned. Take care.